is Marvel Age Star Wars. My name is Sean. I'm sitting here with Brooks. Hey, try being a little more enthusiastic, Mr. Sean. This is Marvel Age Star Wars. So it's like old yeah, podcasting much, days. Much, You're yeah. listening to Marvel Age Star Wars. My name is Sean. No, see, modern YouTube is, what's up, dudes? Let me tell you how to be an alpha, all right? I need you to smash that like button. I tell you. The louder someone is, the least, the less sincere they are. That is what I've learned from YouTube. And someone's like, let me tell you how to act. Like, whoa, that's a very insecure person. <laughs> oh, man, I don't want to vent already. Maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get into it. <laughs> oh, by the way, that's something that's been driving me crazy, too. Every YouTuber now says, let's get into it. Have you ever noticed that? It is funny how, and, and I, here I, I just, can't blame I them. just did it. I didn't even mean to. I, I just can't blame it because I watch YouTube videos like for pointers, even though I'm not making them yet. <laughs> but, but I do get that. You can tell where there's an influence among that community because some of the phrases. Because I noticed, like, in comic tropes, when he's talking about people's opinions, he'll say your mileage may vary. And I was watching a, another channel called Casually Comics, which is also really, which is also really good. She's really funny, but I've noticed, like, I heard her the other day where she was talking about, like, that's just my opinion, your mileage may vary on stuff like that. And it just, like, that was such a weirdly specific thing to say yeah. in terms of that. I listen thought, well, for, like, uh, she's influenced by, by, by the nomenclature that he uses. So I that now that you know, listen for, let's get into it. Yeah, now. See if you now pick that up. Every, well, I'll hear it every time now. Star Wars, issue 14. Let's get into Star Wars. This is the continuation of a story that has Luke trapped on a water world. On a doom on world! An, yeah, it's a world covered in water, and he's trapped by this governor who lives in a giant wooden pirate ship. This and is actually a very cool Han, cover. Leia, and Chewbacca come to rescue them. Sort of. By duping Crimson Jack into taking them there in his Imperial Star Destroyer that he he has for a pirate ship. Yeah, by about the least effective means, they have conned a space pirate who captured them both into taking them to the unknown planet by making them think there's rebel treasure there. Why do people think there's rebel treasure anywhere? They're like just sort of a, a poor kind of resistance faction. But whatever. It works, and they all get there. I do there. like that it kind of harkens back to the old-timey way of thinking that treasure is like a box of gold buried somewhere, not something hidden in a online bank account. You know, it's like actual physical gold somewhere. And I guess since Crimson Jack just stole a treasure from Han that he got from the Rebels, they're like, hmm, there's gotta, they can't have given him all of their wealth, so yeah, there has got to be more there. This cover is kind of psychedelic, man. I love this cover, although it's we're going to have to go back me, to the original. Cause I feel like I'm tripping a little. The cover, the colors are, of course, more garish than they are in the original. Now, this weird orangey in the, kind of design in the back is not that different from the original one. Although, we're going to have to go to the original because it Chewbacca just disappears here. What happens to the bottom half of Chewbacca? <laughs> oh, yeah. Good That's Lord. true. And let me point something else up. Look at the top. Look at the Star Wars logo. You see the S on the right? Like, what happened there? There's a blue border all the way around, but it stops. Yeah. Okay. Right at his gun. So we're going to pause that? right at the jump here. We're going to pause to see if we can find the original version. I wonder how they made that pattern. They didn't hand draw that. That's got to be like a, a, a zip -a tone or some kind of halftone pattern yeah. applied. Like, I don't know if it's all called Zipatone. I'm just, but, but I love that, that they used to just apply those patterns like from a sheet. They would just cut them out and put them in. It's funny when you're looking at old comics, and you're like, how do they do that? That's amazing looking. It's like, it's, it's, it's as low tech as it gets. It's awesome. No, it happens on the original. Obviously, the color palette is a lot less garish, but yeah. It, uh, what I otherwise love about, as far as a cover goes, like a group shot, like they really did just forget that Chewie apparently is just power sliding in behind Han and Leia. <laughs> With his legs bent all the way backwards? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. No, I don't see no, it. No, he was skewing. He was skewing in Leia's direction. So, uh, that's, so he's like, that's no, it still doesn't make sense. And well, what happened to that S up there? I mean, how... 
This is the second weird mistake we found that it went all the way back to the originals. It really happened, yeah. Like that word balloon was one weird one, and now now we have this. Yeah, this we didn't put this on you, Roy Thomas. You're the editor still. I think we'll find out in a second. We'll see if that's true. Still. Oh, we don't have the TM here. Also, that's weird. Otherwise, this is a beautiful cover. You see in the logo. The original cover had a TM up in the star, up in the S there. Yeah, I guess whatever they did that to obscure that S, they just kind of deviated from the original logo that they would normally use. No, but I'm saying the digital copy is is identical and a mistake, but it doesn't have the trademark. Oh, you're saying the original does have it? Yeah, yeah the original does have it. That's weird. Like maybe Disney doesn't care because they're like, well, we own every aspect of Star Wars. We don't. We don't. It's weird they take the effort to. We don't have to tell clean people. that up. Well, maybe they went back for to an earlier version that didn't have that applied yet. You know, there's a lot of pasting. Yeah, that's true. And the recoloring's not bad except for the blue in the logo. It's always this intense, bright well, Mario we talk- sky colored blue. We talked about this, and this shouldn't apply to covers nearly as much as it does to interiors, so this isn't the only issue, but but we were talking before we started recording about uh, Comic Tropes did a whole video not very long ago about the art of coloring and the importance of coloring and how that process works and why reprints in general and digital representations in particular seem to be so garish in comparison, and it really has to do with the, the colorists at the time knew what the grade of paper and the printing process was and what it would do to colors. So they they would make color choices that they knew would get muted because of the nature of the printing process. Yeah, so they compensated if, for it. Yeah, so in a reprint, if, they, if you used that original coloring note, if you used that same mix, like say on Baxter paper, like in a trade paperback, then that brilliant white paper would bring out a much more brilliant color palette that would go against what they originally intended because they were intending for it to be muted during that printing process. They, they, if they were doing, if they're being diligent in their job, they were, they were choosing colors that they knew were going to get toned down when they went to that lower grade paper. Chewie's got a weird-looking gun. That's something to have. Luke also has kind of a weird-looking gun here. Yeah, and Chewie's carrying a pistol. He's got an odd-looking pistol, yeah. No and trigger also, guard. if you took that pistol and put it into Luke's hand, it, it would look huge. So it's like a pistol designed for giant Wookiee hands. Yeah, it's a Wookiee gun. Kind of weird, but that's and cool. C-3PO disappears, too. Come on, guys. At least R2 has the right number of legs this time. That's true. C-3PO has no legs. Yeah. Otherwise... They're getting sucked into a void. This this red pattern behind them, some kind of black hole of yeah, exactly. Twilight Zone gate or something. They have whatever the sound this, the signal of Armageddon! Are. The sound of Armageddon! I, I do love this cover design. I wish I hadn't noticed that about the legs. But, but otherwise, it's a cool cover. It's a cool group shot. And everyone's so angry at <laughs> it. The well, Tino ones are always man. really angry. It's Armageddon on Doom World. It's like a what double threat. <laughs> Actually, Archie Goodwin is the editor now, so so all that stuff's on him. Poor Janice Cohen. All her work getting messed up. Yeah, and then she like looks at these digitals like, why is my name there? I didn't do that. It's hopeless, R2. Nothing any of us says is reaching Chewbacca. He's a uncontrollable rage machine. (laughs) Quit talking and help me. I love that. Like, what is he supposed to do? (laughs) 3PO, come over here with your muscular arms. What, you'd rather get beaten to death with my arm and one of your own? Like, well, how about you take the hit for me, 3PO? What do you call someone who fights an enraged Wookiee barehanded? Dead. That's an old cantina joke. And a hilarious one. <laughs> cantina. Because in Star Wars, they're all called cantinas. Yeah, how drunk do you have to be for everyone to laugh at that joke in the cantina? Dead. It's just Luke Skywalker it. is not dead yet. 
but he'd be the first to admit things don't look hopeful here in this obscure water world. Because of their misunderstanding. Goodness, Chewie. Come on, yeah. This is disappointing the way they're treating Chewbacca in this series. Yeah, I gotta, I, I gotta agree with you here. Ooh, this is, this is a cool spread. This is a beautiful image. I love this, this, this epic battle of these these pirates versus the dragon lord. I'd, I'd actually like to have this print without the captions, just on my wall. I like this box up here. The as serpent. A serpent riding dragon lord storm against hydra skimmers. That's a weird shaped little word balloon. Mm -hmm. Word box, whatever you call it. Yeah, Xbox. I like the artistry of it. Yeah, very cool. This may very well be the final battle. Like, we've never seen them fight before, so that doesn't really hold a lot of weight for us. But so the it is captain very cool is, looking. The governor, excuse me, has climbed to like the top of one of these masts to overlook the battle. The sea dragons are in a frenzy, Governor Quarg. No matter what damage we inflict, they keep coming. Somehow their masters... Well, you do that guy. <laughs> Hold on, where... Their masters know I'm on to the greatest prize of all, Commander, and are willing to destroy themselves trying to wrest it from me. But, Your Honor, it's us that's being destroyed. If things keep going as they are, we won't have a skimmer left. We've got to set sail, sir. Move the ship before... Move? You mean flee, you coward! Whap! Sea scud? That's weird. Cowardly sea scud! I, I'm having a hard time with that line. We'd have to shut down the sonic jammer to do it when it's locked in on the biggest spacecraft we've ever netted. It's too big, Governor. The tech, the technos. I like how they call them technos. <laughs> <laughs> like I'd love it if they looked like Daft Punk. Yeah. <laughs> they kind of do, I think. We'll see later. Or maybe that's Crimson Jack's guys. This must have been yeah. a two-page spread because this is like yeah, you could tell a by big the big angle. Yeah. Just the dimension, the dimensions of it. Very cool. I do like the on, on the digital version it looks very cool when they line it up like that. So I'll give them that. Yeah, cuz it's an actual physical copy, you'd have the the fold in the middle that kind of makes it awkward looking. Mhm. Mm it's too big, Governor. The Technos say that jammer can't bring it down. We're drawing all the power from the ship's engines just trying. You all try, you all try harder or hang! I'm like, I like how I'll hang you all. Like, Well, not if it's just you against all of us. That's not how dictatorships work. It's up there in orbit, Commander, and I want it! Don't make me whap you again. <laughs> yeah, there's more whaps where that came from. What is up with the planet? That's weird looking. It, it looks, always looks like it's kind of exploding. I think it, it looks furry or something, like it's got moss growing on it. Yeah, because they got the blue in the middle, and then like it's you guys got forgot weird to, green you forgot algae. to mow the planet. <laughs> yeah, I need to pull the original page of this up too, because that's weird. It's looking. mostly yeah. Let's take a look at that. It's mostly algae. Yeah, it looks more normal with the muted colors. I'll tell you that. Yeah, it's still kind of weird though. Why does it have two different colors? That's a weird choice. Maybe they do have an algae problem. <laughs> Chief Engineer, what have you learned? Oh, wait, hold on. How have you learned when the civilized systems has its claws into us? Seems to be a jammer, Captain Jack. Uses sonic waves to disrupt our drive. Yeah, see, there's Daft Punk right there. That dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got it, yeah. I heard it was a favorite trick of space wreckers in the Corteen asteroid belt. So basically, he's just explaining what they told us last. This is a recap, about. yeah, yeah. That's what he says. I don't want a history lesson. I was there, like it was moments ago. I read last issue. <laughs> if our emergency drive can outlast their jammer, Captain, right now oh, it shit, looks like sorry. a draw. This is the blasted Han Solo's doing jolly. What's the report from the hold? How did Solo and his furry first mate escape with the woman? <laughs> the woman. Yeah, I'm a woman too. That's weird. They took advantage of the confusion when that jammer thing hit us and fought their way to the Millennium Falcon. She looks weird here. She's getting more Eon Flux looking all the time. <laughs> yeah. Sabotaged. Oh, wait. He asks, um... Oh, hold on. If that smuggling ship can fly, what about all... What about all our boarding craft? Sabotaged, Captain. 
I like how they call him Cap'n. Cap'n. Before the three of them blasted off, they're long gone, and it's partly my fault. I wouldn't have been cut off guard no matter what happened, except that princess kept filling my head with thoughts about things other than pirating. Other than pirating. Come on. Good grief, huh? Get, get it in your pants, Jolly. Damn. Yeah. You can't even think straight. Come on. <laughs> Things such as being attracted to a man for the first time. A man like Han Solo. Trick question, there are no men like Han Solo. There's only one, and Leia said he kisses amazingly. Apparently. She's got a weird flappy neck again because they didn't color her collar. So, what, Han is underwater here? Well, I hope so. I'm assuming by the bubbles, or he's blue because he's dead. <laughs> the scuba gear all of me, makes me assume that he's been captured despite by a dragon lord. the worst fears of his Wookiee friend, he's alive. And, and despite being knocked off the crash-landed Millennium Falcon by a Hydra Skimmer cannon blast, he's alive and wet in the hands of the dragon lords. I'd like if, if alive and wet was just like a, a phrase they use on this planet instead of alive and well. <laughs> Why I'm wet, I'm very wet. How are you? Wet. Gotta go on like a Corellian. Vet. Which leaves only one other Star Warrior unaccounted for. Princess Leia Organa. Once Senator from Alderaan. At least they, they, she, they don't say she's a Senator anymore. They're acknowledging the current political environment of yeah, Star Wars. Senate has dissolved, so... Now a guiding figure in the Rebel Alliance and trapped with Han Solo's downed spacecraft. They've stopped towing the ship. That means I can expect visitors soon. Thank the Force, their lasers don't seem to be functioning full strength. If Han and Chewbacca weren't hit directly... I'm telling you, they they're making Leia the smartest character of I do, all of them. I do like that. She should be, because that's consistent with how she was represented in the first movie. Like yeah. They're kind of bumbling around, and she shows, in and starts tell, shows up telling them what to do. That That's a good representation for Leia. Yeah, I'm glad that they're at least giving her some agency. They could have survived, but since I wasn't out of the hatch when the blast came, I may be the only lucky one. In which case, I'll see that those skimmer-riding killers don't get away scot-free with what they've done. So that's a phrase in the Star Wars universe, scot-free. Scot did you free. say that? Is that, that how is... you spell it, with just one T? I never even I noticed th that I before. I think so, but I'm not really sure what the other I have to look up what that means. Yeah, I've never, I've never looked into that. Scott free <laughs> that's pronounced Scott free But as Princess Leia sets her blaster for kill, I don't think they have settings in Star Wars. Well they, well, no, they do they, I take it back. Yeah, you're right. No one ever says set to kill, but they have a stun setting, so And when I shoot her instead of a straight bolt, it's some kind of weird it circle. It's a weird circle y thing <laughs> that they yeah. keep for the rest of Star Wars history and I love it. New attention There's balls. a year's worth of metal and spare parts in that craft, Your Honor. I guess they're talking, oh, they're talking about the Falcon. Why fight to haul down that orbiting monster when this one has fallen into our laps? That's a good point. Like, we just built crap out of crap. What do we need all these spaceships for? Because if we succeed, it will mean metal, parts, and plunder for a lifetime, you dolt. We'll have weapons enough to wipe the sea dragons and their masters off this world forever. We'll make this planet truly ours, something my fool of a father who brought us here was never able to do. I like his stubble. And his weird, like, it looks like it goes up over his eyes. It does look like they used a, like a half-tone sheet for that, like they didn't just apply that. But Governor Quark, the jammer isn't budging? The jammer isn't budging that big starship. The Dragon Lords will sink us long before it ever has enough power to. You're being a fool. Wake <laughs> yeah, up. For real. I'm starting to question why we ever followed you. You seem like an idiot. Because I don't trust your judgment. You're shouting yourself to death, Commander. That's a good one. Like, keep, keep antagonizing me and watch what happens. The solution floats at the dock below us. But it means a reprieve for the Master Machine Smith. And his, oh, he's talking about Luke. Like, yeah, we hanged that other guy already. So, before we jump into this fight down here, I don't, I forget, why. how did Luke end up in this little room? I don't know, he got cornered by Chewbacca, I can't remember how. Chewbacca, like, grabbed him 
okay, Luke shot at a skimmer because it was shooting at the, the Millennium Falcon. And then Chewbacca, I guess, went into the water. And Luke was on his skimmer, and Chewbacca, like, reached up and grabbed him. And now we're in a room and they're fighting. But I don't remember how they got into the room. Maybe I just need to go back and look at watch our own show. Yeah. But they're prisoners here, right? They're locked up in this room, I guess. I don't think they're locked up here. I think he just chased them and they ended up here. I don't remember if they're stranded. Well, maybe we should just skip it since neither of us remember for sure. <laughs> what I like is, if I'm seeing this right, 3PO used a good old-fashioned trip do <laughs> on, yep. on Chewbacca, <laughs> like it that's works, like, sir. <laughs> yeah, oldest trick in the book, even a long this, time ago. This is Three Stooges stuff. <laughs> yeah, this is this might be my favorite thing that's happened so far. Grog, you, you got him to trip over me, but won't he be even angrier when he gets up? Grog, R two <laughs> now. Like they've had time to work. So, so they've had a time to plan this out well, amongst the three of them. Well, maybe but we Chewbacca just had didn't... a Wookiee contingency because apparently Chewbacca's so unstable. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Because, I mean, he couldn't have said right now, okay, you trip him and then you spray him, because Chewbacca would have heard that, right? Oh, this is pretty cool. He's got a fire extinguisher. Which, yeah, uh, Ch- uh, R2 is pretty handy. Yeah, spray foam spews from the R2 unit. Foam generally used to smother the flames of ship-to-ship space battle. Mm-hmm. But it's also but now completely it toxic off to whiskey. And makes, to yeah, and knocks Wookie out unconscious <laughs> forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, take that cantina joke. That saves but... us from killing each other for a while. But Skywalker, Governor Quark, wants you and your mechanicals now. Like, See, so he looks like he's trapped in this place. Well, but, like they, but they still just top. call him. Like they're not like going down to get him. They're like, get, quit messing around with that Wookiee that I've never seen before and won't ask about. <laughs> So now he's on the Falcon, which I guess is... Oh, they towed it, right. They towed it back to their big ship. You want to link the Millennium Falcon's engines with those of your city ship? What? To provide the extra power my sonic jammer needs. Only you and your droids have the technical know-how to get it done quickly enough. That's why they haven't been scrapped. Like, that's getting old. Like, you're the Dread Pirate Roberts all of a sudden. Fix this, or I'll most likely kill you all in the morning. And you aren't swinging from a yard arm for betraying us. Why, you fat-faced excuse for a leader? Hey, let's not fat shame, guys. Yeah, let's, my let's friends not also on attack ship. my leadership skills. Also, the wrinkles on Leia's dress are really inappropriately whoa, placed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is that, those aren't wrinkles. That they, is obviously Well, they go else. all the way down, so I think it's supposed to be, but, but you guys are pushing it. Why, you fat-faced excuse for a leader? My friends were on this ship. Then one of your skimmers gunned them down. Is it any wonder I blew it out of the water? I'm only sorry you weren't aboard. Not all your friends perish, Skywalker. Cost us a number of good men to dig out this hidden survivor. Now shall I make the obvious threats? Or will you begin work at once? So, Governor Quark's threatening Luke a little... Baby dragon comes up and he, he kicks, kicks it. it off the Whoa. boat because he's because he's a jerk. Bad move, Neil. And then it swims down and attaches uh, itself to one of the giant dragons. You were right, mm-hmm. or who was right? Which one of us said that was going to be the baby? I think I, I said that about that. You called it on the jammers. Uh, okay, well you were right. And it's carried to an underwater mountain. Oh, cool! A secret world locked within it. Yeah. I was wondering how this worked. That's kind of neat. They this have an underwater... Cool. I don't know how that works with air, but... but it, just, these it, air... it just does. Yeah. Another dragon injured. The battle grows more devastating with each moment. We're fortunate to have gotten these... We were... we're fortunate to have gotten you here when we did, Mr. Solo. Yeah, these air pocket caverns make a refreshing break. Some pretty damp scenery, friend. If you hadn't grabbed me after I was stunned by that laser blast, I'd have drowned for sure. But, you know, there's a suspicious side of me that keeps wondering why you bothered. Don't don't take the time to ask what happened to Chewbacca or Leia. Or anybody, yeah. Yeah. I'm on to another thing now. Because in a war to the death, 
You can never have too many allies. War, aren't they? Aren't all wars to the death? Maybe not a war of words. <laughs> Maybe not the way you do it. Maybe not a war between Coke and Pepsi. Yeah, maybe not. The Cola Wars. Interesting philosophy. You positive these king-sized serpents understand it? Absolutely, Mr. Solo. I like how the word balloons are orange now. I guess because they didn't want to color the background. Because the background they make white, yeah. Yeah. They taught, us, they taught it to us. If they had felt otherwise, we so-called dragon lords would have perished at sea a generation ago when we deserted the city ship. Deserted it? You were kicked off. Yeah. They have their story and we have ours. The dragons are intelligent life forms? What? I like how everyone assumes nothing is intelligent in this <laughs> like, galaxy. Your grandfather? I like how basically Han Solo is incredulous about everything he's told by anyone for any reason. <laughs> exactly. We don't rule them. We coexist with them. And he's hugging it. Oh. Except that Governor Quark and his fellow wreckers could never accept or comprehend. So these guys, though, at least their parents. This guy's pretty old, so he may have been one of the original techies that yeah, maybe. revolted. He's got a beard, but so he's at some old. point he was uh, on board with the wrecking because these techies worked with Governor Quark's father to wreck ships. Yeah, weren't they all space wreckers? Yeah, good point, Mister High Horse. No more than they realize these little creatures are children of the dragons and from and form our spy system on the great ship. Oh, Good, clever. Yeah, nice system. We send children to spy for us and they get <laughs> we kicked. We send our babies. <laughs> yeah. And then they kick our babies. It's a perfect plan. Into the barracks, complex messages require more sophisticated... For, for systemicated, <laughs> more sophisticated <laughs> communication than my sonic staff provides. Inside. So in here they've got some high tech stuff, but I guess they're techies. It's understandable. Yeah, they're the technos. Inside quarters constructed from salvaged parts of wrecked spacecraft, they communicate with sound, right? Pitched beyond human hearing at ultrasonic levels. Un unfortunately, what's now being communicated is grim indeed. Your ship will be used to augment the power of Quark's sonic jammer. Its sound waves can drive some dragons mad. Each time it is used, the more sensitive ones become frenzied and attack. Yeah, Today, that it was one. operated constantly. So we were both right. We're proven right in two pages. Yeah, nailed and it. It's, and its effect has spread. The entire sea dragon population is feeling it and fighting it. And at the moment, it's winning. That's good, though, right? Oh, but if it goes on much longer, or becomes any stronger, the dragons will die, Mr. Solo, swiftly and terribly. Oh, As the it. smaller and more vulnerable among them have already begun to do. Oh, okay. show us <laughs> the <laughs> babies? show us dead babies. <laughs> We've got what to are stop you doing this. To it, then? What's those lasers doing? Trying to revive Maybe they're it? trying to maybe they're I don't know. We've got to stop this thing. Now we can't hold anything in reserve. It's going to take every dragon rider who can move. Are you with us, Mr. Solo? Do I, <laughs> I don't have, have any choice? experience riding dragons, <laughs> yeah. but okay. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. All dragon riders, are you how, coming? How like, hard what? can it be? Yeah, uh, I got to appreciate this. If I'm a little kid, I'm totally on board. And they're just like, I'm glad you're here. Come ride dragons with us. Like, oh, shit. okay, yeah. Here's your dragon prodder, your sonic this, device. <laughs> yeah. Drive this dragon towards the battle. Are you coming? What's happening right now? This cavern oh, isn't my choice. idea of a great place to spend the rest of my life. Yeah, your home looks like garbage. Yeah, this is space crap. Like everything else, you're my only hope of getting back to the Millennium Falcon. Don't count on it. Next to Governor Quark's sonic jammer, your ship is our prime target. Hey, hey, wh hey, what? Whoa, hey. what? Yeah. Well, now Slow I'm not down. on board. You didn't have to share that information. Back it up a few steps. But the time for waiting is long past. Soon the last of the Dragon Lords and their serpent allies surge toward the battle and the awesome destruction that it holds. And with that, I think this is a good breaking point for part one of issue 14 we can come back and see the what i assume is the conclusion at this point of the of the final battle yeah of the story well it's got some awesome destruction yeah promised you guys promised riding a, a dragon 
that's pretty cool. It does seem like things are happening in the series now. Like you didn't get to like it's an, an issue and go like nothing. Nothing was done there. <laughs> like they are running around, riding dragons, shooting things, blasting stuff. Yeah, this episode, this issue rather, is is pretty exciting so far. It's got all kinds of action. Yeah, I like this storyline. I don't like the way they're talking about Chewie, but other than that, everything's fun. Yeah, we got some characterization problems to work through still. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Check out tv8mydinner.com. That's yeah. where you can find our podcast that we've been doing for ages. Many years. At the time, it felt like when we started that podcast, it was 2007. It seemed like we were late on board to the podcasting thing. Because, like, Greg, who was on the show, kept telling us, we've got to do a podcast. We should do a podcast for, like, two years or something. We were like, oh, fine, mm -hmm. we'll do a podcast. And it's too late. No one cares about podcasts anymore, but we'll do one. And now... It's like we're grandparents in the podcasting world or something. Because yeah. people are like, you're still podcasting? No, people podcast all the time now, but some people are like bragging podcaster. about their they're bragging about their shows like, yeah, we started this. We're old. We're old school. We started this back in like 2017 or something but like Usually that. like it's like Joe Rogan or something that well, what they call yeah. a podcast is like broadcast on TV or something like There are plenty of guys that do like regular podcasts too. I'm just saying, we've been doing it since, like, gosh, you know, the the almost the beginnings of YouTube. We should have put it on YouTube then. Then it would be super old school. Yeah, for real. Well, yeah, we might have might have gotten some traction on YouTube if we'd done that. Anyways. Well, who knows? TV8MyDinner.com. Go check it out. It's got years of stuff you can listen to if you ever find yourself in a prison or something with nothing to do. In a prison with just nothing but Wi-Fi. <laughs> I like that. That's a good way to sell it. If, you, there, you, if there's literally nothing else. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, if you're looking for hours of mindless entertainment, um, so also check out Amazon to pick up Sean's book if you're interested. Yeah, the Cosmic Unconscious is still for sale there. That's about the psychology of Star Wars, so you can check that out. TV at my dinner is also on Facebook. So you can follow us through there. TV Imager is also on Twitter, but we don't spend a lot of time on Twitter. So thanks, everyone, for listening. If you like it, go ahead and smash that like button. Yeah, click the bell. Get notifications and whatever that does. Like sure it to and subscribe. leave comments. And, yeah, join us in the comments. We'll, I would like some I'll comments. I'll answer comments. I don't care. I will answer them personally, and I mean at your house. Yeah, like leave, leave a phone number. I'll call you back. <laughs> or but, just um, the comments pretty much fill that function, though, so you can just do it. We'll have our conversation there. That's, that's probably more normal. Stay tuned. Coming up soon, part two of issue 14, and we'll find out about the awesome destruction that happens in the, the storied battle of the Dragon Lords. The Armageddon of Doom World. Until then, I'm Brooks. I'm Sean. We'll see you then. Bye. Snoop.